I'm Kaylee Ricks. And I'm Evie Schultz. Welcome to the Butler Beat. Campus is buzzing in preparation for Saturday's men's basketball game against number six Villanova. Kyle Beery has the story. Saturday is Valentine's Day, but for Butler basketball fans, sappy cards, boxes of chocolate, and red hearts won't be the focus of the day. They'll be expecting something more like intense basketball, bulldogs, and white t-shirts. The number 18 Butler men's basketball team hosts number six Villanova at Hinkle Fieldhouse, and it's got everyone on campus excited. Butler sophomore Brooks Barradin is ready. Uh, for me, this is the first time there's really been a huge game at Hinkle. Last year, there weren't many big games, so I'm really excited for this big conference game because it really could decide who wins the conference. The University and the Dog Pound student section are promoting local company 199's Butler Vintage Tony Hinkle t-shirt for the whiteout. Hinkle Fieldhouse Spirit Shop employee Kathleen Slaza says those shirts, as well as other white apparel, are selling like crazy. Though they were starting to sell before we even got them in. Um, we had people, because Tuesday night was the first time they advertised them on the uh, video board. And we had people begging for them on Tuesday night. Head coach Chris Holtman says it's nice to play in a game with such pageantry, but his Bulldogs will be plenty focused on Saturday's game as well as the big picture. Uh, you know, we'll let other people uh, get really excited about about that. Um, you know, we're glad that um, there's this kind of attention. We we also realize we have two very important uh, home games after that, um, where we play Marquette. Uh, in Georgetown. Junior guard Kellen Dunham says they'll be preparing like they have for any other game all season. I think throughout the year we've been going through a lot of uh, big games and having a lot of good, great environments so it's great for our team to look, look ahead uh, to this game this week but um, I think we're going to take the same approach as we always have and be very detailed in the way that we go about it. The Butler campus is already buzzing for Saturday's game. Tip-off is set for 6 o'clock on CBS Sports Network. For the Butler Beat, I'm Kyle Beery. The blueprint for Butler's new parking facility now includes retail space on the building's first floor. Students and faculty members have opinions on what they'd like to see fill the space. Kelsey Ralph has the story. Butler can expect to see a new parking facility on campus this fall, complete with businesses occupying the first floor of the building. The multi-use parking garage will include 15,000 square feet of retail space and is scheduled to be up and running in August. Students and members of the local community have been given the opportunity to provide feedback regarding what restaurants or shops they want to see fill the available space. Um, I think restaurants would be really nice, especially for freshmen and other students that don't have cars, because then they'd be able to get food like at somewhere other than the dining halls. Just last week, students received an email from Benjamin Hunter, Butler Chief of Staff, asking them to fill out an online survey to help choose retail partners for the new facility. Hunter's email states that there is room for as many as eight retail storefronts, some with outdoor patio space. The survey asks whether or not the retailers should accept dog bucks, and students are weighing in. I think that these different convenience stores or restaurants in the lower level of the parking garage should accept dog bucks because it's really convenient for college students to just be able to swipe your ID and have that just accessible there. Current seniors are having mixed emotions about graduating before these new businesses arrive on campus. I'm really sad that I'm a senior and I'm missing out on this parking garage and all these restaurants on campus because that's such a nice addition to campus. According to a previous article in the Butler Collegian, the names of the businesses that have already expressed interest in the plot have not yet been released. For the Butler Beat, I'm Kelsey Ralph. Butler University is taking a look into its past. From February 1st to the 7th, Butler celebrated Founders Week. Whitney Simmons has more. Butler University celebrated 160 years this past week. For many students, knowing when Butler was founded was a little difficult. 1993. Oh, I'd say before 1921. I think 1850. But knowing the founder was a little easier. Like Ovid, Ovid Butler. Ovid Butler. Ovid Butler. Ovid Butler founded Butler University in 1855 on the principles of diversity, equality, innovation, and access. Every February, the Founders Day Committee and other organizations around campus host a variety of events to celebrate Mr. Butler's birthday. Some of the events this year include a panel discussion, 
food trucks, and speakers. Many students feel that it is important to know the history of our school and where it came from. I think it's important to remember what, what Butler was founded on and who really gave up to um, create this beautiful campus and beautiful institution for us. You know, I think it's just important to uh, know the history of where this, how this great school came to be and how it's continuing to improve and how we're building from those lessons uh, that we learned in the past. So rather it was 160 years ago, or today, students at Butler University are still learning from the Founder's Message. For the Butler Beat, I'm Whitney Simmons. Butler University is hoping to admit 1,100 students for the fall of 2015. In order to meet this goal, the Colleges of Communication, Liberal Arts and Sciences, and Education hosted a Scholars Forum this past Saturday. The top one-third of admitted students were invited to campus to interview for different scholarships. Exploratory Studies Academic Advisor Cynthia Payne says the day was not only to award money, but to make sure students had the opportunity to ask questions. It's about making them feel comfortable and about making them feel welcome. Um, so as much as we were interviewing them, they were interviewing us and, and we're wanting to make sure that we're the right fit. So it definitely is meant to be a good day, an exciting day, you know, making them feel good about Butler and this hopefully being the choice that they make. According to an email sent by President James Danko, 635 students will interview for various scholarships, including full rides, by the end of this weekend. The exact number of students who will receive these scholarships is unknown at this time. The women of Alpha Chi Omega are raising awareness about domestic violence with Healthy Relationships Week. This week focuses on educating and promoting the importance of healthy relationships. Vice President of Philanthropy Paige Hafer says it's important for people to think about what love means to them. To be able to help their friends, help their peers, uh, help their families, um, you know, have healthy relationships. So this week is all about celebrating that and really focusing on the positives to help end domestic violence, sexual assault, and dating violence. Students can stop by Starbucks between 9 and 11 on Friday morning to make a Valentine. Valentines can be made for the Julian Center, which is a local shelter for victims of domestic violence or for friends and loved ones. Speaking of Valentine's Day, the holiday is quickly approaching. Many Butler students have strayed away from celebrating the holiday because it is overrated and forced. But sophomore Isabella Ferrari says that she enjoys Valentine's Day. I really like it because it's a great way to celebrate how much you like your significant other. You can just have a time to be like, hey, I really like you. I'm glad we're doing this thing. Whether you like the holiday or not, you have to admit you love the guilt-free candy that comes along with it. However, not all Butler students are excited about Valentine's Day. The holiday of love can cause a lot of anxiety for some. While many girls do wait for flowers and chocolate, many have to wait for it to be on sale the next week. However, it's not just those who are single that think Valentine's Day is stupid. I never understood the point of like um, having a specific day to show that you like somebody. It doesn't really make sense to me. I mean, I've had a girlfriend for like five years now, so I think every day is the day to like show that you like somebody. So if Valentine's Day isn't the holiday for you, don't worry. Although it may feel like it, you're definitely not alone. There are many on-campus jobs available for Butler students to make some extra cash for late night food. Brianna Manley takes a look at one job that combines sweat and stamina. The Bulldogs Health and Recreation Complex has been a little busier at the start of this new year. The HRC offers group fitness classes several times a day and they are filling up fast each week. Classes include Zumba, yoga, Pilates, and more. Um, I do better in group fitness classes because if I have an instructor pushing me to do the workout, I actually do it rather than by myself. Many classes offered at the gym are taught by students' peers, like sophomore <laughs> Kayla Collins and alumni Haley Jones. Collins teaches relaxation yoga each week. Instructors are required to be certified in group fitness, but teaching among classmates can be a bit intimidating at first. Sometimes you kind of get like nervous, but it's actually been like the more I've been doing it, the more I've been like more relaxed and comfortable just sharing my love for yoga and it's been a really good experience. So, As students arrive for an hour of exercise, sophomore Brianne Monell shows up to see familiar faces. My friend Kayla teaches it, so it's really cool to like see her doing that. Class participants, like senior Mary Pennington, says her instructors have done a great job keeping group classes stimulating. I went to Kayla and another teacher for Zumba and they're really positive. They push you to keep going but they make it fun. 
Leading group fitness is a paid position, but some take more away from teaching than a little extra spending money. It just is a fulfillment for me. It's a big passion of mine, so it definitely brings me happiness and joy. To view a schedule and list of classes, please visit www.butler.edu slash HRC. For the Butler Beat, I'm Brianna Manley. Butler Ballet will present the Midwinter Dance Festival this weekend at the Howard L. Schrott Center for the Arts. The program features Gerald Arpino's Viva Vivaldi in addition to works by six resident choreographers. Dancer Julianne Blunt says Midwinter isn't as traditional as other Butler Ballet performances. Um, it's a mixed program, so there's contemporary work in there. It's not necessarily a full-length classical ballet like Nutcracker would be. So it gives students a good opportunity to see a different, a completely different side of the art form. And it's a Butler cultural requirement, so that's a good reason to go. Tickets are $20 for adults, $15 for seniors, and $10 for Butler students. Tickets are available either at the Clues Memorial Hall box office during the day or at Schrott two hours before the show. One of the first signs of spring has arrived as the Butler baseball team kicks off its season this weekend. Austin Monteith has a story on this year's squad as they prepare for the new season. The pinging sound of aluminum bats will soon be heard at Bulldog Park once again. Butler's regular season begins this weekend as the Bulldogs look to improve from last season's fifth place finish in the Big East. Last season's team leader in hitting, Chris Moranto, says fielding has been an area of focus in practice. Last year, so the coaches, you know, we've been working on getting more live reps in, getting a lot of more ground balls because defensively we weren't where we wanted to be last year. You know, we're towards the bottom of the Big East defensively, so we've been working on getting a lot more reps there. Butler's pitching staff will have a new look this year after losing its top two arms over the offseason. All-conference selection Gunnar Johnson graduated, and Eric Stout was drafted by the Kansas City Royals. We're young and we're kind of inexperienced. We have a lot of question marks because we lost a lot of key guys from last year's team. Um, you know, four or five of our main pitchers are gone from last year's team, so we've got some guys that have to prove themselves, but I'm excited about it. I think that's actually a positive. Butler will miss the presence of the team's second leading hitter, Marcos Calderon, who graduated last spring, but hitting coach Andy Jukins says the void will be filled. But uh, when you lose a 300 hitter in, our, in Marcos last year, it's a it's, uh, something tough to fill, but I think we got some guys that can step up and, and do the job there. As the team enters its second season in the Big East, senior Ryan Wojciechowski says the competition will only get more difficult. It was really tough last year and I expect it to be at least that if not better this year with teams knowing each other more. They know how to play you. They're used to your level of competition. They're used to your team. The Bulldogs will open the season with a three-game series at Lipscomb that begins Friday. For the Butler Beat, I'm Austin Monteith. Butler junior Ernie Stevens dreams of figure skating in the 2018 Olympics. He's one step closer after winning the U.S. National Figure Skating Championships in January. I joined Stevens on the ice to learn more. Between 2018 Olympic dreams and homework, it can be hard to find balance. We're running on the ice and off the ice to finish up class assignments. But Ernie Stevens is putting in the work for the long road ahead. Stevens teamed up with his partner, Caitlin Fields, last year. They won the U.S. Figure Skating Championships in January. Ladies and gentlemen, Caitlin Fields and Ernie Utah Stevens. A huge thing for us and a huge step towards the Olympics in 2018. Stevens is used to the pressure. The Louisville native started skating when he was 10 years old. He's now a junior stratcom major at Butler. He lives in downtown Indianapolis and commutes to Carmel to skate almost every day of the week. After their victory last month, the pair received more exciting news. They were chosen to represent Team USA in the World Championships in Estonia in March. Getting to compete at Junior Worlds is a huge accomplishment. There's all the top teams going there from each country. The Olympics are Steven's current goal. But after the spotlight, he wants to be a creative director for a company. He says the support he's gotten from the Butler community so far has been invaluable. My class teachers are so welcoming to my schedule and they really do the best they can to help me out. It's a very tricky time with the World Championships and National Championships, but they couldn't be more supportive. And that is just as big a support as Team USA is. Stevens and Fields head overseas on February 28th. For the Butler Beat, 
I'm Evie Schultz. One Butler student is beginning to build a local fan base by showing off his musical skill set on campus. Mike Murtaugh has a story. For some, the Sigma New House at Butler is a place of residence, but for junior Charlie Politi, it's turned into a recording studio. Politi, also known as the hip-hop artist Charlie Breeze, wrote and released the single Charlie Girl in late January from right here on campus. He says he hopes to combine some of his unreleased tracks into a project soon. There's a lot of like individual stuff, like like music videos and stuff that I want to do this year. And then I also want to work on maybe like a small little EP. I just want to put something out there that's showing that like I'm still working and still improving. The artwork for Charlie Girl was designed by fellow Sigma Nu Kyle Olson, who says he loves being a part of Politi's process. It's really cool actually, um, seeing everything come together from him showing me listen to this beat to him saying, I finished mixing this project, you gotta listen to this. Junior Dylan Menifee has been making beats for Politi since last year, when the two shared a room in the house. Menifee says that their collaboration was an alignment of hobbies that began by messing around in the studio. And we started sampling the most unbelievable, like stupid stuff, but then it just started like blending together kind of like nicely and it was funny and it was just fun, it was a lot of fun. Politi, whose music has achieved over 7,000 hits on YouTube and been featured on hip-hop websites such as Datpiff, says that it has been a special experience to work with his friends. I mean, it means a lot. It's you know, some stuff that I'm not really strong in, so um, it's nice to have people that know what they're doing, and even if they don't, they like to have fun with it. When he's not recording songs or working on his classwork, Politi has figured out a way to combine his love for music with involvement here on campus. He currently serves as the co-chairman of Program Board's Concerts Committee, bringing artists like Lupe Fiasco and Small Pools to events like last fall's Butler Palooza. For the Butler Beat, I'm Mike Murtaugh. I'm Evie Schultz. And I'm Kaylee Ricks. Have a great week, Bulldog fans.